again after another week again. So th these videos are starting to be every other week, which it, it's okay with me just as long as I keep doing them. Uh, that that's the main uh, main point, I guess. Was was what I'm doing to just keep doing these, keep doing them until I don't know. I I'm finished with them. Whenever that will be. Uh, <laughs> And this vlog is going to be like a follow-up to my last one, which I, I think was about uh, me talking about how I think this new co-worker of mine is also autistic. I think that's what it was, but it's been a little while I can't quite remember but anyway that that's what I want to talk about the the, the new guy who I think well one of the new guys there, there's also a, another one starting out uh, but but the, the one who I suspect has autism um, so it was th this past weekend, um, and I was working the closing shift, which is something that I've been doing for like the past month. It's almost been the same shift every day I parked for about the last month so it's consistent it's just not quite what I want I don't want to say anyone's name so I'll, I'll just call the the new guy that, that I think has autism uh, call, just call him Cal for now so uh, it was supposed to be me and Cal doing the closing shift that day. And then, and then there was also uh, uh, going to be uh, a person who, uh, who we call partial closing. Uh, the, the person comes in an hour before the closers come in and leaves an hour before uh, the closers leave. Uh, so the partial closer, he didn't show up for work that day. And apparently he's done this a couple other times, so he might not be working there for much longer but so we were down one person uh, which which isn't too bad I've, uh, I've I've worked with only two people before doing closing so and then there is this a mid shift person who uh, usually works from like ten thirty a.m. to seven p.m. at night, and yeah, that's actually the shift I want. Yeah, that that's the one I want to do every day. But but anyway, so me, Cal, and the mid shift. We were the only ones that were going to be there uh, after 4 p.m. Because that's, that's when 
the last of the morning shift people leave. But then between three and four, Cal slipped on the floor, which, which I've actually seen him do before once. And then I've heard he, he's done it other times where he, he slips and, and yeah, the, the floor can get slipper, slip, uh, slippery uh, really easily. It's just a hard floor, tile floor, especially if you spill oil, cooking oil on it, then, then it can get bad. So Cal slipped and fell and he got back up and he seems to be okay. Uh, and then 4 p.m. comes and the last morning person leaves uh, to go home. And then me and the, the partial clothes, clothes, oh, I can't speak. Me and the partial closer, uh, who I'll call John, we were just working, doing what we normally do. Like I, I was washing dishes and he was uh, cooking food and he, he was getting ready to go to lunch. Uh, and then uh, comes to me and says, do you know where, where Cal is? And I say no. Uh, and we both look for him and the deli's not that big. There's not a lot of hiding spaces, except for in the freezer and cooler. But we don't find him. And then, and then we we start getting really busy because it's, it's getting close to dinner time. Uh, so, and then after we finish serving the customers, uh, we have a little bit of a break. And so then John goes off and he looks for Cal, like maybe he went to the bathroom or he went on lunch and didn't tell anyone, but we don't find him. And then, and then we get busy again with customers. And then one of the, then, then a little bit later, uh, one of the floor managers uh, comes to us and he says, Cal hurt his knee. He says it doesn't feel good, that he, he's in pain, so he, he's going to go home. Uh, so then John has to stay late because now there's only two of us. There's supposed to be four, but the other guy didn't show up and now Cal's going home. So John left at 9 p.m. and ended up working around 11 hours. And then it was just me uh, after 9 p.m. And really the only thing we had left was finish the dishes, which only one person can do at a time, so it was just me washing all the dishes, and then and then I put the clean ones back and mopped the floor, and ended up staying until 11 p.m. And just throughout that night, uh, we had to call in a, a cashier who had worked worked in the deli before and he had to come in and uh, help us out but only for like a little bit like when we went to lunch he would cover it for us but then he would have to get back to his cashier position so as to not leave the cashiers short-handed so it was and to stop it off, it was uh, actually kind of a 
really busy night. Uh, a lot busier than it usually is on the weekends. Weekends are a little bit slower, but not that day. No, I was busy. So yeah, it, that was just a bad night working. Yeah, so it, it pissed me off that he disappeared without telling us, which actually, when I was younger, I used to do the same thing. I, I would just like disappear uh, from situations rather than talking to someone saying, asking them if, if I could leave or or what was happening with me, I would just disappear without telling anyone. But I don't do that anymore. And I now can ask people questions I have. And don't disappear without telling them. And especially when we were already short one person, and uh, Cal knew that before he left, and well, before he disappeared and then left, yeah, that, that just m makes it worse. And it also made other people mad too, like John and, and like the, the morning, uh, the morning person who, who was work working that day. Yeah, yeah, other, other people were mad at him. And, and then the, the next day he, he didn't show up, but he, he called in that day. And now, after he did that, now all the other co-workers are talking more about him and I'm, I'm hearing more about him, about what they think and, and, well, it's not really bad, but basically they just think he's weird. And yeah, yeah, I find him weird too. Uh, like, he talks a lot and some of the co-workers find that annoying. And then a couple of times he's been talking to me and I've been going somewhere else. Like, like I was going to take out the trash, but he started talking to me and then I, I was like trying to leave, but he was still talking even as I was walking away. So I was just like, yeah, uh-huh. Right. Sure. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, and to me, it seems like he's trying to be social and have conversations with people. Uh, but he doesn't really know how to. <laughs> yeah, and the next day, the, the guy said that when Cal called in to say he couldn't come, to work. He said that he was in the middle of icing his leg and had his knee in the tub of ice and and the, the other guy was just like, this is getting weird and a little bit creepy. <laughs> That's weird, man. Yeah, 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 I can see that. And yeah, it seems like he's trying to be social, but it comes across more as being weird. Whereas me, I'm just trying to say a, a few sentences to people um, e each time I see them. So that I'm talking and not being quiet the whole day. Basically the, the opposite of him. And I still haven't brought up the autism to him or to anyone else. And I'm not even sure how to. And one other thing I didn't mention in my other video was that he could be undiagnosed. So I'd be bringing up a subject he might know nothing about. So I would be talking to him about 
mental illness. He might not know he has. And I don't think my coworkers are trying to be mean to him or, or you know, like bull, bully him or anything. But they, they're just like saying how they feel about him, and it's, it's kind of how I feel. Um, and especially when he just disappears from work and doesn't tell anyone about it, then, then I can't really defend him, and, and it makes makes me feel. More negative towards him, I guess. Yeah, so there's that. And hopefully, nothing like this will happen again. And it'll just be one time. Uh, yeah, so until next video, goodbye.